Now that we've covered some best practices for self-service strategy, let's review how to configure Remedy for self-service. Remedy for self-service enables your customers to create and resolve their own incidents and requests using the self-service portal from their computers or from their mobile devices. The portal is a place for your customers to engage in multiple activities such as making requests for services or raising incidents and then monitoring their status. They can view broadcasts, they can search for knowledge and manage approvals, provide feedback, and also use Chatter as well as Remedy Force Chat. From an administration perspective, administration and configuration of Remedy Force Self Service is accessed from Remedy Force Administration for ease of use. The remainder of the tutorial is focused on self service administrative activities, beginning with setting up your self service site. Your first task is to create your self service site. This is basically how you want the organization to recognize the address of your portal, as well as how you set up access to your portal. The sequence of steps to set up your self service portal begins with navigating to Set Up, Develop, Sites. And then from here, you're going to go through the steps to check availability of the domain you want to use. And then register it. Then you will update your site information. And as a note, this information is also available on the Remedy Force Wiki product documentation as a reference. Once you complete the required information, you're going to select Save. The next series of steps are to define the background Visual Force pages, basically the Visual Force components to be utilized to make the portal function either in the URL or via the mobile. And then the following steps are here to define the Visual Force error pages. These are the error messages that are predefined. And next we get to the steps to configure access to your self-service site basically setting up who is going to have access, and then selecting the permissions for that access, and then selecting the field level security, and then adding your users, and then the licenses for that usage, and finally finishing up with configuring the queue. Essentially, this is creating the bucket for your end users. and then assigning it. And finally, your self-service site is ready to go for you to begin to configure it. As a quick note before we get to branding, the steps we've just reviewed to set up your self-service site may differ slightly depending on any single sign-on solution you may have decided to implement. A couple of SSO solutions are presented here. Please reach out to your CSM if you require additional guidance. Next up is self-service branding. Branding a Remedy Force self-service portal can be quite fun. You can choose from quite a lot of different out-of-the-box branding themes, use your company logo, and do quite a lot of different configurations to make the portal look and feel this, the way you want it to. The next few walkthroughs take you through some of the most popular branding activities that customers engage in. You can begin by navigating to configure self-service and then select branding. Here you're going to see a lot of different areas to brand, such as the application title, the logo, the background, and the banner. So in my example for the logo branding, I've detailed the steps here to upload my new company logo. And then I've gone ahead and changed the application name. And finally here I show you how easy it is to change the banner to reflect my company logo and my newly branded theme. Some Remedy Force customers want to change the color scheme to align with their own marketing requirements. And we also see many customers who want to modify the out-of-the-box text on the login screen. A great use case for this is when users sometimes forget what their username is. When they click on Forget Password and they're asked for their username, some customers want to add a friendly friendly prompt to indicate what that is. And so this can be done using the translation workbench. Overwriting the text can be done by first navigating to the translation 
workbench and choosing to enable translation. And then you're going to be able to select what you want to translate, or in other words, what you want to override with your new text. So once again, once you've gone ahead and enabled translation and provided your new overriding text, You can see here how easy it was to modify the text on my login screen. And speaking of translation, here's a quick note on localization. The translation workbench is also the place to go if you have language requirements, so quite similar to translating the text using English, the steps are similar if you want to translate something to another supported language. Now that we've set up our site and branded our site, Let's get into some walkthroughs in regards to the portal front end.